Okay, today's tutorial is done with my MacBook Pro using Adobe Acrobat Pro 2017. There are some variations on a PC using Adobe Acrobat Pro, but not many. You're still using the same functions. Before we get into it today, please be sure to click subscribe and follow me on social media. Here are all my accounts. Okay, go ahead and put all of your documents into one folder because it will make combining them later on within Adobe much easier to do. You don't have to organize them in here. All you have to do is put them in one general folder to go ahead and combine them. So open up your Adobe application and get into your tools. Now your tools are on your right side of your Adobe application. Um, again, there's going to be some variations, but either way, what you're going to do right here is create a PDF. We're going to bring all those PDFs together into one cohesive PDF. So right here you can see that there are multiple ways that you can create a PDF with single file, multiple files, but for this purpose we're going to create a PDF with multiple files. So we're going to bring in those multiple files. Of course you can create multiple PDF files but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to create one cohesive PDF. So click that next button. So right here from this screen is where we're going to add all of our files. You can drag and drop here or you can add them from that folder that you put all of your discovery documents that you're going to produce into that one folder. So add all of these files right here in this screen. You'll see that it easily brings them over into multiple files that you can see in icons here or you can change the way that you view this into a details list format, which is what I prefer. This is a great screen where you can see all of your documentation. You can add files right here, or you can rearrange the files that you already have in here. So this sepsis document, I want to go ahead and move up at the top, um, but maybe I want to rearrange it a bit more and I'm going to just move that down one so you can use that button to do so. The bookmark for file on your right hand side of the screen is actually pretty important later on and I will show you in the bookmark section of the PDF that we create. So go ahead and combine those documents. So Adobe did what it was told and combined all of those documents into one document called Binder 1 of 60 pages. So if you take a look over at your page thumbnails, you can see all of your pages right here in a thumbnail format and of course the bookmarks. This is where the bookmarks come in and we're going to manipulate these a little bit later on but for now you can easily toggle through your documentation um, through using these bookmarks and if you click on any one of these it will take you directly to the first page of the document that you're producing. So what I want you to do right now is just kind of go through all of the documentation that you put into uh, your documents and audit them to see if any of them need to be turned around or um, later on we'll redact them. This document looked like it needed to be turned around but it didn't. We've got that appendix D up at the top and that's the title of the document so we want to leave that. This one looked like it was turned sideways but it's not and that's all this is as an audit. But we see here that we have a blank page entirely. And if I fit this um, page to screen, I can see that there's nothing at the bottom and nothing at the top, so I don't need it in here. We can go ahead and trash that, and yes, I want to permanently delete it. If I did have a document that I needed to turn, I could easily do that using this button and rotate it in any fashion that it needed to be. So I've gone through all of my 59 pages now because I removed one and everything looks good. So I'm just gonna click on this first document here and close the uh, thumbnail tool. Now we're going to go over here to the right side of the screen back in tools and start typing Bates. Um, you don't really have to look for all of your tools if you can go into this section and start typing in what it is that you need you can usually easily find it. So we're going to add Bates numbering to the document production the binder one that Adobe created for us. So click OK here and you'll see the screen here where you can add in the Bates numbering. 
Um, I really like to add my Bates numbering in the center footer text and you can see all of the boxes on top kind of correspond with the boxes on bottom. So why don't you go ahead and click that insert Bates number tab and what you will see is the number of digits and the starting number. Now the number of digits can change. I believe you can go down to four, but I like to keep it at six just to make sure that I have um, enough zeros in my document production. The prefix, I'm gonna put in here PP for plaintiff's production. If you've got a defendant's production, you can do a DP or anything else. For purposes of this tutorial, we do not need a suffix at the end of our Bates numbering. So it auto-populated our Bates number here down at the bottom of our page. We also have our margins at the um, top uh, right-hand corner there. I'm going to go ahead and increase the font because it's a little bit small. And I'm going to decrease my bottom margin to 0.3 just to give it some more space. I want to go ahead and also change the appearance and shrink the document to avoid overriding the document's text and graphics. This will slightly reduce your page size and alter your page just slightly, but that's okay. I don't want my Bates numbering over any part of my document production. It makes it really difficult to go and index later on. If you were adding on to your document production, you could change your numbering right here in this center footer text, but we don't need to do that. If you want to go ahead and preview your pages and make sure that nothing is colliding on that bottom uh, portion of your, your text there, then you could do that. If you've got a confidential protective order um, uh, type that you need to put in there, you can do that in your left footer text or your right footer text. None of this is confidential, none of this is protected. So I really don't need anything in those boxes right there. If this is Bates numbering that I'm going to use often, then I want to go ahead and save these settings so that I can come back and use um, this Bates later on in the format that it's in, the margin, the size, um, and it'll be easier to do it later on in another document production. So you can click um, save those settings right there and go back and you can see that plaintiff's production is saved right there. So I've got another document production later on in this case or another and I can go ahead and use those save settings. So click the OK button and you'll see that all of your Bates numbers are being applied and Adobe says so right here. Click OK and you've got your Bates stamp document. We need to go ahead and save this document as it is right now just to protect it in its form that it's in. It's fully combined, it's Bates labeled, so we need to go ahead and save it. But don't worry, this isn't the last step. We're just saving it for the purposes of saving it and having a protected document in the event something were to happen. So you can um, save it however you want to. Click that Save button, and we're going to go ahead and continue to work with this document right here. Now that our document is fully Bates labeled, we're going to go back and work in those bookmarks. And again, I will tell you why later. But what we're going to do is manipulate these bookmarks a little bit um, so they're reading exactly how we want them to. When we're going back and going through our document production, we want to easily be able to toggle through all of the different sets of the document production. I'm going to go ahead and audit this really quick to make sure that all of my baits are right where they should be. There's nothing overlapping down at the bottom, which there shouldn't be. Um, but it, just do a quick audit and uh, make sure that all of your documentation reads as you want it to read. So now that I know that my document production looks good, it's time to start changing how these bookmark read so that it matches what the document actually is. This is a chart assembly of active medical records, so that's exactly what I'm going to put in my bookmark, the title of this document. In addition to doing that, I also want to go ahead and add the Bates numbering for the pages of this particular document. This is going to help me for indexing later. So I can see that my first page is clearly document number one, but if I toggle to my next, next document production and fit it to screen, I can see that that starts at Bates number seven, 
which meant that my chart assembly ended at Bates number six. So I want to go back to that bookmark, edit the index number, and give it a number six so that I know that it ends at document number six. Then I can go back to my sepsis sheet and I can rename that sepsis document. And of course, it's going to start at number seven. So I can go through and look at the next document and ends at 11. So I know that my sepsis sheet is from seven to 10. So I will go ahead and rename this document how I need to, the sepsis fact sheet. And I'm going to Bates label it here for uh, plaintiff's document production starting number six, or I'm sorry, starting number seven um, and ending in 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and you're going to go ahead and do this for all of your bookmarks because it will definitely help you with indexing later on. Now, we're not done with this as soon as we're done with the bookmarks here, and we're certainly not going to produce it this way. This has too much metadata in it that's privileged and protected, and we don't wanna produce it in this format. So I'm going to go ahead and start fast forwarding through this screen while I go ahead and change all of these bookmarks. So now I've got all of my bookmarking done. I've got all of my Bates numbering in there. I can easily toggle through all of the different sections of my document production. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save once again just to make sure everything remains safe within my document. Now it's time to redact anything that needs to be redacted. We're going to go ahead and close this tool right here and start um, redacting, which means go ahead and open the tools and start typing redact and you can see it right there. So click that button and we can go ahead and start marking our document production for redaction. Say you're a defense attorney in this particular situation and the location tab of the chart assembly was okayed in this case by a judge after a motion to compel, but allowed you the permission to go ahead and redact the retention time within that chart assembly. So I can leave the location, but go ahead and redact the retention. So I'm gonna mark redaction for text and graphics. Click don't show again if you don't want that screen to show again. We're gonna go ahead and click don't show and okay. You'll notice my cursor here. Um, there's um, a way for you to individually redact each of these um, retention time items or you can use uh, this tool right here where it redacts it all very easily. It's uh, quite easier than doing it individually. And you'll see that there's really nothing here when I redact it and that's because that's my default right now. But you can change your default in the properties section. You can use an overlay text and choose your font. You can decide on the text alignment and the custom text that you're going to put in there. For this purpose, we're going to put in redacted. We're gonna uh, click the auto size text to fit redaction region um, so that we're not constantly having to shift our font size and you'll notice that the font size actually um, is removed. You can change your font entirely, but there's really no need to get fancy here. Click OK, and you'll see that it, it actually didn't change my properties because I didn't ask it to change the properties of that redaction. You're going to have to right click over that and click on the properties section. Then you can use your text overlay, choose your color, choose your alignment, put in the text that you want. Now if I just clicked OK right here and I didn't change anything else, I didn't change my font, I didn't change my size, um, and of course you can lock these and make these properties default, but we're going to go ahead and leave it right here and um, not do anything with font. If I wanted to, I can change it to any one of these and click OK. Now you'll see that I have a very small redacted right there which isn't very visible 
and that's not what we want. We want to make sure that this is very visible. So go back into properties and click that auto size text to fit uh, redaction region. And you'll notice a big difference when you click the OK button and see how much it fills up. Now that is a noticeable redaction. Much, much better. And this is the type of redaction that you want to see in your discovery. You'll notice that when I hover over the redacted portion, it says redacted when I hover. But it's not going to apply it yet until you permanently apply it to your page. So you can click that apply button and it will give you that little warning that it's going to permanently remove these um, the lettering there. And yes, you want to actually go ahead and remove it. We are not going to go ahead and look for the uh, hidden information throughout the rest of the document yet because I know I have some additional redacting to do. You can click yes for always perform this section, um, but we're going to go ahead and click no right now for this tutorial because we have the rest of our, of our document production to redact. So mark for redaction and go ahead and redact all of this. And you can see that those properties went ahead and stuck, but again, I'm just hovering over and it shows redacted. It's not permanently removed yet. Go ahead and redact the rest of your documentation so that everything um, shows that it's redacted when you hover over it, but we're not yet applying it. We're going to be efficient here and redact everything that we need within this document and then we will go ahead and apply it all at once whenever we are done. That was the last of my document. Um, so that means I don't have anything else to redact and I need to go ahead and apply these redactions permanently now. So click that apply button. Yes, you want to permanently remove, click okay. And again, you can um, decide to remove the rest of the hidden data right here, but we're not going to yet. We're going to go ahead and go through the rest of these pages and just do a quick audit and make sure everything looks well. Great. Everything looks fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and remove that hidden data. And you'll see that it found all the metadata, the bookmarks, links, actions, JavaScripts, overlapping objects. And you can take a look at all of these if you want to. And I'm just going to click on these um, bookmarks and hidden text here to show you what sort of metadata is within your document that you need to remove. So go ahead and click that remove button. We'll remove all of that hidden metadata right there. It might take a little time depending on your document production, but Adobe has removed all of the selective items and the changes are not applied until you save this document. Look at your bookmarks. They are all gone. Those bookmarks were saved though um, before in that binder one document so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, it's still showing binder one document here, but it's not yet saved. So we're gonna save this now, and we're going to save it in the format that we're going to produce it in. So for us, we're going to do the plaintiff's uh, projection, and it's going to be one through 59. So I'll go ahead and put that here. And it looks like I have a little hyphen that I need to get rid of. So I'll remove that right here and click the save button. So now I've got my plaintiff's document production in the way that I want to produce it. There's no metadata, there's no bookmarks. All of my page thumbnails look fantastic. Okay, so now it is time to index our document production, but remember we don't have any bookmarks in this particular document. So the index I'm going to provide you guys today with, and one of them, because uh, I'm going to provide this to you in three different formats, is in OneNote. OneNote is a great tool. I use it often. I put all of my indexes in here so that I can find them easily regardless of what device I'm using. I don't have to be on my PC at the office. I can be on my phone. I can be on my tablet. But I can, I can view these documents. 
So go back to the original document that you that you uh, saved, that binder one, that has all of your bookmarks in it. And you'll see that I changed my bookmarks slightly and took out those parentheses that were in there, and here is why. I'm going to go ahead and click on that first bookmark. I'm going to copy that bookmark. Now you can um, click the Command-C um, and your MacBook Pro, or you can right-click and copy and bring all of that over here right into your index and paste it right here. Take your document Bates range, cut it right here, and then paste it into your Bates range section right here in your index. Include the date you produced your document, whether or not it was produced pursuant to a confidentiality agreement or a protective order, when it was produced to your expert, and of course, any other notes that you have on the document as well. You know, if there's something that you redacted um, or if there's something that's um, particularly special about that document production, that section, then you can put it right there. Since you've bookmarked these sections um, and you have um, put your, your wording and your bookmarks the way that you want, you can actually extract your pages from specific sections. So if you right click and extract, you'll see that it extracted all six pages of that chart assembly of active medical records. It didn't just extract that one page, it extracted all six pages. Now you can go and save these extracted six pages wherever it is that you want to keep them, whether or not it's in a house server, but for me, I like to not only keep them in an in-house server, but I want to keep them on a cloud um, environment as well. And here is why. OneNote has a great feature that allows you to be able to link your documents to wherever they are within your system. For me, I'm using two different systems. I'm in a system in-house and um, on the cloud. So I can link this by putting in the address of where it is I want to link this within a cloud environment. Now something to mention about saving it in your cloud environment is you'll notice the document that I saved is not redacted. So if you want to save a different version of the document production that's redacted, you can do that or you can put in a comment right there showing that it was redacted. You could place it in your notes, however you want to do that. Let's take a link of the document we saved in OneDrive. And if you click this button right here, and the share button above it, you will get a link out of OneDrive that you can copy, and it copies it right there, and then go back into your OneNote document and click the link button in the top ribbon, sorry about that, and um, put in the address of the document in the cloud environment, and there you go. It makes it an active hyperlink um, for you to use on the go whenever you need. You just click that button, and there you go. It goes into your OneDrive folder, and it shows you uh, your document right there. You can download it on your device. You can um, annotate it. You can share it with someone. Um, whatever you need to do with that document. But it's very easy to access on the go, which is the most important thing. Work from anywhere. So of course, on that note of working from anywhere, I wanna show you how to do this. Navigate to your OneNote application on your mobile device, click the, in the notebook and the section and the page, which is your document production index. And right there, you have your document production index. Had you gone through all of the bookmarks, you would have had them in here. You would have um, separated those documents out by extracting them and putting the hyperlink in here. Click on that hyperlink and open, and it navigates you to OneDrive, where there you have it. There's your six pages of that portion of the document production. Now, of course, in that index that you created, you can create a link of your entire document production, but this puts it in index format for you.